Pieter Army Yank Pepperbox Bee Buster, William Hovey Smith, 2015. I'm the author of Extreme Muzzleloading, and here we investigate a new wrinkle in Pepperbox technology. This is Hovey Smith with Hovey's Outdoor Adventures, and it is springtime in Georgia, and I've got my turkey hunting clothes on. Yep, but what this is about. It's about the Pieta Army Yank Pepper Box that we're about to load up for carpenter bait. Yep. Now we have already developed a load for it. And we're going to load up 20 grains of Triple FG black powder and some styrofoam wads and also 25 grains of magnetite shot. Now, magnetite is a natural iron ore, and it is magnetic. Yep, sure is. And it is dense. So it is heavier than sand. It is fine-grained, so it makes a good shot for something like carpenter beads. So that's exactly why we're going to use it. And sometimes later, We'll actually go back over to Lake Sinclair, and I'll show you how I actually pan it uh, from the lake bank. But for now, uh, we're going to go ahead and load up the pistol. Now, we had a problem with the Yank Pepper Box, and that is the hand spring failed. It cracked and ultimately fell off. So, without it, the chambers and the cylinders would not rotate when the hammer was cocked. Obviously, you see, they just did. And they do now very well indeed. Well, I made an expedient repair by replacing the hand spring with a piece salvaged from a ballpoint pen. Yeah. And here's some pictures that will show you exactly how I did it. Here is the hand with its broken spring, and now the Dremel tool, and also the pen from which the spring was derived, and here's what it looked like when it was actually put on the gun. I tried a couple of ways to cement that spring into the hand, and the best way I found was actually using epoxy. And that seems to be holding well enough right now. Now ultimately, uh, I'm going to just order a new part. But for now, we got something that we can work. And that's how these old guns were, by the way, kept shooting in the day. Uh, if they broke, the fellow who owned them found some way to repair them and keep his arms working. Yep. So not right now, superficially, you would never know it had a non-original part in it. So we'll go ahead and load up the gun. And I'm going to move the camera up so you can see something in the process. The Yank Pepper Box has just an elongated cylinder. It never did have a barrel, by the way, if you hadn't seen the gun before. Uh, this is all there is. The barrel is not missing. It was just never made with one. So the first thing you do is you remove this pin with a fitted screwdriver. And if you get one of the guns, this is the first thing you should do is actually fit a screwdriver to fit this screw so you don't bugger it. Now this screw uh, is not under great tension because all of the firing pressures on this cylinder barrel combination are directed this way. Then you put it on half cock and you just slide the cylinder straight off the gun. And that's how you remove the cylinder in case you didn't know. All right, so we now have that here and we have a powder measure and we scoop it full of 20 grains of powder and we've already preset it. Okay, just like yay. We have a little funnel. Woof. Put it down in this chamber right there. 
take one of our pre-cut styrofoam wads and this is out of a tray from a piece of store-bought meat something I seldom buy by the way and I buy mostly to retrieve the trays rather than the content okay crunch that down uh, this measure is set for 25 grains of the magnetite shot that we'll be using okay fill it up much the same way strike it off this glistens because it's actually crystalline that's what these are little crystal faces magnetite crystallizes early and that's the reason that works okay which one do we load all right this one right here I'll funnel again pour in our shot okay put in our overshot wad right there all right then we put it in our loading stand like right here which I claim to be the world's ugliest invention rotate it down into place and crimp it okay now that gives approximately one inch of effective barrel okay you can experiment and see if actually less shot will give a better pattern but at least that gives it some room to sort of organize before it exits the cylinder here so we're going to load up the rest of these and take it out there for carton bees so now we have our cylinder loaded and we replace it back on the gun again putting it on half cock and it uh, just slides right back in there and we replace our screw okay and we just put percussion caps on the nipples and we're ready to shoot we're going to shoot the Navy Yank pepper box at a target at about 10 yards. But first, I want to sh actually show you what it looks like to fire it. What the first shot told us was that these styrofoam wads were not set quite firm enough to actually hold against the recoil. And I did get some creep in one chamber. The rest of them held, however. So we're going to proceed, and we're going to shoot at the target down on the lower part of that frame first. Okay, and now I don't see any hits from this range, so let me aim a little lower. I still don't see any hits. Now we're going to try at the aluminum cans. Okay, all charges discharged. If anything hit anywhere, I fail to see it. Obviously, we're going to have a little load adjustment to do. And I'm aiming approximately one foot below the point of aim. And we'll see if we can get something happening on the target. I'm also shooting at a much closer range at about five yards. I see that we got at least a couple of small hits, but very dispersed and rather disappointing. I mean, that's a pretty loose group any way you cut it. So now we are about a yard from the target. And previously we had only three hits. And so now we're aiming at the bottom piece of tape. All right, so that's what we gotta do. We gotta get them close, guys. Yep. 
Now that will kill bees. So we sort of proved the technology, but not very well. Uh, we fired six shots, and we wound up with four bees. Okay, get close within two or three yards, and you have to aim about a foot low if you're going to get them. But, but with a little practice, I think we can do better. We're now about to resume the hunt for our infamous carpenter bees. And we know that the piano pepper box will pattern well enough if I can get them at ranges of two to three feet and aim from four to six inches below. It's not that I want to kill every carpenter bee in the yard or in the country, but I just want to get these that are working on my buildings. Okay, one down. One or two have been hanging around that corner. Try for him. Miss. Got him. Miss. There we go. Now we have one last round. And then we'll be out of materials. But there's one that still likes that corner. So we're going to try for it. Miss. How did we do on carpenter bees with the Yank Pepper Box? Well, we were only about 50% successful on two attempts. So that's not particularly good. Obviously, an optimum carpenter bee gun needs some further development. And what we found out about this pistol was that this screw will become loose. That allows the cylinder barrels to move forward, and then when you fire, you will have a misfire because of insufficient pressure to fire the percussion caps. Yep. So that was an interesting thing learned. But now, this is Hobie Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Now Hera, my outdoor lamb, had no problem adding carbon to bees to her normal diet of insects. Now I am also the author of Backyard Deer Hunting as well as Crossbow Hunting. My, my improvement to the hand worked well or better as the original part and here you see it on the gun as it was used. The optimum load is apparently 20 grains of triple FG, a 36 caliber, uh, 25 grains of sand size magnetite shot, for more info on my books, blogs, and over 400 videos, go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.